Welcome to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast with your host, Greg Shepard. Greg is a fee-only financial advisor who specializes in helping those in higher education to take control of their retirement. Since 2001, Greg has helped employees all over the country make the most of their retirement plans. Hey there, folks. Greg Shepard here, Higher Ed Retire Podcast. As always, I appreciate everybody out there listening to the silly little podcast that I put on for you folks out there. Goal of this podcast is to educate you, arm you with as much information as I can so you can go out there and make educated decisions when it comes to that oftentimes confusing higher ed retirement plan. Quick intro for me, for those of you that don't know me. Again, Greg Shepard, I do have an investment management firm. I am in the Kansas City area, but because and due to the evolution of technology, guess what? I can help folks all over the country now, which I do. So if you're looking for some help regarding any of these topics or anything dealing with your higher higher ed retirement plan, by all means, get in touch with me. A lot of folks out there do so, and you don't need to be a client of mine. Email greg at shepherdfinancial.com. Shepherd is S-H-E-P-A-R-D. I'll throw that information down in the show notes. Phone number, if you're so inclined, 913-521-2381. Today's topic uh, actually, it's going to consist of three topics. The reason I say that is we are going to talk about three issues, three things, three strategies dealing with TIAA traditional. The catalyst of these topics comes from my YouTube uh, video channel, <laughs> okay? I guess that's what you call it. Feel free to check that out. There's a lot of information on there, short clips, you know, three, four, five minutes long, a uh, myriad of of Ideas, thoughts, strategies regarding your higher ed retirement plan slanted towards that TIA account. Uh, same name as a podcast, Higher Ed Retire, but under the YouTube channel. Before we get going, I do need to recite some disclosure. Investment advisory services offered by me, Greg Shepard, as an investment advisor rep of s and Financial Services, Inc., which is a registered investment advisor. So you guessed correctly, s and Financial Services is the firm that I work for, work with. Okay, folks, so let's go ahead and get going. First, let me let me name off the three topics or issues that I'll be discussing today, and of course, we'll break it down individually. So the first one, uh, as I creatively coined, is called when the TPA exceeds your RMD, which of course I'll elaborate on. Next one is can I transfer TIAA traditional balance not converted to that annuity, to that lifetime income annuity option. Third one is using TI traditional versus, uh, or I guess in lieu of my bond choices. Now, again, the reason I bring these topics up or these issues is that they were really popular on my YouTube channel. So I figured you folks that aren't tuning into the YouTube channel uh, can benefit from this information as well just by listening instead of watching and listening to me, which is probably better because my face is certainly made better for these podcasts. So let's go back to the first one. When TPA exceeds your RMD, what in the world am I talking about there? Okay, so again, and none of this is none of this is investment advice, folks. Before you implement anything dealing with TIAA traditional, make sure you contact TIAA themselves. Uh, contact an investment advisor that specializes in higher ed retirement plans. By all means, feel free to contact me as well, and I can certainly, you know, help you or point you in the right direction. Okay, you don't have to necessarily be a client of mine. So. TPA is that transfer payout annuity issued by the TIAA traditional investment. So let's say you've, the the easiest scenario to to explain this is that you've retired, okay? You have reached the RMD, which which is required minimum distribution age or phase in your life. You initiate that TPA from your TI traditional in an illiquid contract. And let's just make these numbers up. Again, hypothetical situation. Let's say your transfer payout annuity paid to you as income, which you don't necessarily have to do, but again, this is a hypothetical scenario. The TPA paid to you is, let's go with uh, $25,000, but the RMD, okay, your your necessary RMD, required minimum minimum distribution, is $20,000. And you say to yourself, well, I'm getting the 25, but I only need to take 20. I don't necessarily need that extra $5,000. Can I, or what can I do 
with that extra money so I don't have to pay taxes on that money because I don't need it. Okay, the answer is logistic. Yes, you don't need to take all of that, but let me explain here. I'm kind of stumbling over my words because logistically, uh, it's easier to show you on paper rather than verbally uh, explain it. But again, make sure you coordinate with Tia uh, to make sure you're doing this correctly. But how it works logistically is you can take that TPA and basically direct it back to that same contract it came from. Okay, so let's say you reinvest that twenty uh, twenty-five thousand dollars. You direct that TPA back to the same contract and make sure you invest that th those monies, those distributions back into uh, money market. Okay, and then from there you can you can request Tia to set up your RMDs from that money market coming to you because that money market's liquid. Okay. So that 20, uh, what was it, 20,000, hopefully I got my numbers right, that 20,000 that is um, less than that TPA of 25,000 can be directed to, to you as income to satisfy that RMD. And then what you can do is take uh, that extra $5,000 because remember, TPA is 25, RMD is 20. We got a $5,000 difference. You can direct or I guess transfer a rollover that excess, that 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 five thousand dollars to in again hypothetical to a rollover IRA, non-taxable event, and therefore defer paying uh, taxes on that five thousand dollars inside that rollover IRA until you decide to siphon from that rollover IRA as income, or you just want a distribution, whatever the case is. But that is a good strategy to uh, defer those monies that you don't necessarily want to pay taxes on immediately by initiating that TPA. I hope that made sense. Just me thinking about all the words I just said, that word salad can be a little confusing. Uh, bottom line here is if you find yourself where you have an excess amount of money coming from that TPA that you don't necessarily need that exceeds that RMD, the bottom line here is there is a strategy where you don't have to take out all that TPA as income. Just coordinate with somebody that knows what they're doing to explain, further explain, kind of like what I did here, but at least show you how that works logistically, okay? So the answer is it can be done. You just need to make sure you know what you're doing prior to implementing that, okay? And remember, there's a lot of nuances, a lot of uh, variables that we're not discussing that may apply to you. I tell you what, folks, I've been doing this long enough to know when it comes to TI traditional, um, there's not a one size fits all for, for strategy A, B, and C. Okay, even with strategy A, B, and C, you can kind of tweak it a little bit to fit your situation. I can't, t I can't scream this loud enough that no strategy, there's not one that fits all. Okay, so again, get some help when it comes to, if you find yourself in that situation. Okay, let's move on. In this kind of, um, piggybacks off the first one, but the second issue or topic is, can I, can you, transfer TIAA traditional balance not converted to an annuity, lifetime income annuity option, okay? So it's kind of the same thing I just spoke about, but a different scenario, scenario here, a different hypothetical, where you have a large amount of money in TI traditional, you've accumulated over 30 years, whatever the case is. You have, again, hypothetical here, you retired and that lifetime income annuity option, whichever option you choose, is an attractive option for your situation. But you say to yourself, hey, I've got, I'm just making these numbers up, $500,000 in that TI traditional. Um, I don't want to initiate the lifetime income annuity option for that whole, that 100% of the $500,000. And let's just say it's in one contract, the same contract, just to make this simple. You don't necessarily have to. You don't have to initiate 100% lifetime in income annuity option for that, in this case, $500,000. Let's just say you do half of it, whatever the case is, and uh, you annuitize in, in the form of a lifetime income annuity option, $250,000. Well, that extra two hundred and fifty k, what do you do with that? Okay. Now, that depends on which contract you're in. Now, if you're in an, a liquid contract, as the name implies, that money is liquid. It's a very simple solution. You can do whatever you want with it because it is liquid. Take it as income. Take it as a distribution, Take which is the same thing. Uh, roll it over to an IRA. Uh, you, so you, that money's liquid, okay? It's about as simple as I can make it with a liquid contract. 
be illiquid contract, it kind of depends. So again, make sure you talk to somebody that knows what they're doing before you start diving into this issue. Uh, the illiquid contract with that remaining balance depending upon when you separated service, in this case retired, if it's not an RA contract, okay, not an RA contract, there is an option where you can take uh, a haircut for that or a penalty and roll over 2.5% uh, to a rollover IRA, non-taxable event, dump it over in a rollover IRA, defer those taxes, and then siphon from that account um, when needed. But again, it's contract specific, so make sure you contact Tia or somebody that knows what they're doing uh, prior to doing that, because like I said, is it, it is contract specific. That is not available in the RA, retirement annuity contract, okay? So make sure you're, you are aware of that. Uh, the Again, illiquid contract, another option. I, I'd, I'd say the only other option, uh, other than of course annuitizing it, would be a TPA. Again, contract specific, but you're looking at a 10, 7, sometimes 5-year transfer pad annuity. Uh, you probably wouldn't pay it to yourself because you already have the lifetime income annuity option going, so you'd probably pay that out to that IRA on an annual basis until that remaining $250,000 is depleted to zero. Okay, And again, the 10-year TPA uh, is actually done over nine years. Okay, hopefully that's as clear as mud. Uh, this stuff can get confusing. I do understand that. I can't emphasize enough. Make sure you contact somebody before entering. So the bottom line is what I wanted to get across here is you don't have to annuitize, that life, in this case, a lifetime income annuity option, 100% of that balance of, in, in TI traditional. A lot of folks get um, not confused but are just, uh, under the assumption that they have to annuitize all of it. Well, you don't, okay? Just make sure you understand that. Uh, last but not least, let's talk a little bit about uh, using TI Traditional in lieu of your bond investment. So this kind of goes for, well, let me preface this a little bit. Uh, the date here is very important because I have no idea in the future when you're listening to this. Right now it's July, late, late July, 2023. The reason that's important is because TI traditional rates are very high, historically speaking. Actually, the highest I can recall absent of November of 2022. So we're looking at probably the second highest rates I've seen. I haven't looked back in you know 20 years ago, but I, I've, I'm assuming we're at one of the highest uh, levels we've seen in quite you know a couple decades or so. Okay, so using traditional in lieu of your bond choices. The reason uh, this this could be apropos for anybody out there, let's just play this out. Under under your higher ed institution's retirement plan, whether it's re, uh, mandatory, voluntary, voluntary, or even through the brokerage link window, what I want you to do, this is an exercise you can uh, enact yourself, just go into your bond choices Maybe pull it up on Morningstar or Yahoo Finance. I like two of those websites. And just look at the historical performance on an average annualized return. Okay. I'm pretty familiar with the TIA platform. This goes for Fidelity as well, by the way. Uh, and so I'm, you know, every contract, every institution is a little different, but there's a, there's a lot of parallels to these institutions as well. So I'm pretty familiar with some or all of your investment options. And again, not investment advice, but you're going to be hard pressed to find those those bond choices that are in excess of five percent annualized return per year. All right. Now, the bond market, in my opinion, is great for uh, we'll, we'll call it stabilizing your portfolio. 2022 was certainly a, uh, an exception to that because the bond market did terrible. The bond market is utilized quite a bit for those that are retired looking for income. Well, if you're still employed, okay, socking money away, you don't need income, right, from this portfolio. You're looking for that accumulation and maybe some stability. Well, stability can be fine. Stability can be found in TI Traditional. Okay, it's that guaranteed account from TI, from TI Cref, of course. But check this out. As July of 2023, you're looking at some of your supplemental accounts, getting 55 5.75% on new money's going in your uh, illiquid sorry your illiquid accounts 6 and a quarter 6 and a half percent dependent upon your contract that is outrageously fantastic can you 
find a bond investment that's going to annually return that amount on average. You'll probably be hard pressed to find that. So let's just say, just make this very, very simple. You probably have, if you're a, a common TIA account holder, you might have three or four different accounts, right? So what you, do, what you have to do is start putting this puzzle together, determine what the TI traditional rate is per account. We'll start there, okay? That's pretty simple. That's, you know, public information. And then look at your portfolio as a whole and determine, okay, am I a 70-30 investor? Meaning I, I want or have 70% in the stock market and 30% in the bond market currently. That 30%, my guess, okay, which is allocated to the bond market, Again, just me talking here, not investment advice or anything like that, probably getting you 3%, 4% if you're lucky, uh, average annual returns from the bond sleeve of your portfolio. And, but it's probably split up amongst those you know, three or four different contracts. Well, let's put this puzzle together where we possibly, if this fits your, your situation, reallocate those funds to the TIA traditional. Make sure you understand the liquidity part of this, okay? and realize that five plus, six plus percent for that bond sleeve of your portfolio, and just whatever you're doing with the equity side, you know, leave that alone if you're content with that. We're really talking about the, the fixed income bond sleeve of your portfolio. So if this makes sense for you, and even if you're you know, in your 30s, it doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, it, it, let me back up. It could matter how old you are dependent upon the liquidity of the TI traditional. Okay, you don't want to be sitting here at 64 years old looking to retire next year and present, you know, $250,000, $300,000 into TI traditional inside an RA contract and not understand the liquidity issue of that. Okay, you could find yourself in a little bit of a pickle uh, if you're needing that money upon retirement. So just make sure you're careful on implementing these strategies. But I think no matter what your age is, with these rates and how a question I get a lot of the times, how long is this going to last? Well, my quick answer is I have no idea. Okay, nobody does. The 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 TI traditional rates are governed or decided upon by TI's TIAA's board of trustees. Okay, I don't have the inside information as to what they're thinking. They probably don't even know right now. So, but what you can do is kind of parallel this information or the TI traditional rates tend to correlate with that Fed funds rate. Not exactly, so don't use that as a 100% barometer, but that Fed funds rate is going to stay high. Your guess is as good as mine, July of 2023 here for a number of months, okay? Um, when the Fed's going to cut those rates, I have no idea. So I would anticipate, again, anticipate, not I don't know this information to be factual, but I would anticipate that TI traditional rate being high for at least the rest of this year, which isn't saying too much, and a good part of next year as well, until they really start, they being the Fed, really start cutting that uh, Fed funds rate. Now, TIA could say, hey, economic conditions are deteriorating, so we're going to go ahead and cut that uh, TI traditional rate prior to the Fed cutting rate. So don't use that as a one-to-one -one correlation, okay, folks? Uh, but I think it makes a good... Uh, it, I think it makes sense to try, if it fits your situation, to take advantage of these high rates. And, um, and yeah, there's that. Hopefully that makes some sense. I kind of hem and hawed on that, but hopefully that makes sense. Like I said earlier, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to help you out. And if I can't, you know, I'll point you in the right direction. And Tia is always a good resource as well when you just call them up uh, themselves. They're great folks over there. If you want to reach out to me, my email, greg, G-R-E-G, at shepherdfinancial.com, S-H-E-P-A-R-D, financial.com. And that's about all I have for you here, uh, folks, today. Like always, I end this episode by telling you to go out and take control of your retirement today. All right, take care, folks. Thanks for listening to the Higher Ed Retire Podcast. Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your retirement journey please visit www.higheredretire.com to see how you can work with Greg or to simply ask him a question. Thanks again. 
S&A Financial Services is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.